Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. The Ender 3 has been the go-to for hobbyist printers for some time now. And now Creality has released the Ender 3 Pro with several upgrades to make it an even better and more precise machine over the Ender 3. Those upgrades are designed to make this printer suitable for beginners and for experienced hobbyists alike. So, does it live up to the hype? Let's find out. Before I get started, I wanted to thank Banggood.com for setting me up this printer for testing and evaluation. Uh, even though this printer was sent to me, all of my opinions are my own, and I will be as honest as I can. If by chance you are interested in buying one of these, I will leave a affiliate link down in the description box below you can click on that link and order your own Ender 3 Pro. Now, on with the review. The printer arrived well packaged in a sturdy box with custom cut high density foam cradling all of the parts, assemblies, and components. I honestly didn't know what to expect when I got this printer, but it definitely will require more assembly than what I'm used to. Assembly is probably the most disappointing part about this printer. The printed instructions that come with the printer are not very clear, and I spent a lot of time trying to determine which rail goes where, because they weren't labeled in any way. There are just some vague illustrations that can easily be misinterpreted during assembly. If you buy this printer, be prepared to spend some time carefully putting it together, because any mistake made during assembly will end up interfering with your ability to print down the line. It took me about an hour to assemble this printer. Let's talk about what else comes with this printer. You get a scraper for removing prints from the build surface, some filament cutters, a micro SD card with USB adapter, some spare parts, a set of hex wrenches, and about 200 grams of white filament. Basically everything is here that you need to assemble the printer and start printing right away. I fired up the printer, loaded the filament, and popped in the micro SD card looking for a file to print. I searched around using the click wheel on the printer and I was able to find plenty of STL files but I couldn't find anything that was printable. At this point I moved the micro SD card to my computer and the test files were there. I was just looking in the wrong place. And look at this! There's a video walkthrough on how to assemble the printer. I sure could have used that earlier the only indication that the assembly video was there were found in this fine print in the printed instructions. In it, it says, quote, detailed instructions for use are available in the TF card. I homed the print head and I spent some time carefully leveling each corner of the print bed. Once again, I loaded the micro SD card and found my test print. I selected it and let the printer do its thing. The model printed on a RAF which easily peeled off. The print turned out great. If I had to guess, it looked like a layer height of 0.1 millimeter. The print speed was also really slow, which resulted in a stellar print such as this one. Next I wanted to try a few of my own benchmarks. First I printed the standard Benchy, but something went wrong. As I investigated the failure, I found that the drive gear on the extruder was loose and spinning freely on the shaft. After tightening the set screws, the printer was ready to try again. This time, the Benchy printed successfully. I also printed a 20mm calibration cube, an engine benchmark, and a couple of vase mode tests. The first at normal print speed of 50mm a second, and then a second at double the print speed, or 100mm per second. Let's see how all these tests turned out. The Benchy printed out really well. It exhibited zero stringing and all the overhangs came out great. The 20mm calibration cube also printed really well. All the vertical sides are really flat and the overall print is very accurate. 
The engine benchmark appears to have printed very well. And with a couple of snips of some tiny support material, you can see how well the moving parts were printed in place. Here are the two vases I printed. You really can't tell the difference between the one printed at 50 millimeters a second and the one printed at 100 millimeters per second, and they both turned out really great. I wanted to push this printer to the limit, so I decided to try to print some TPU filament. Printers that use Bowden tube extruders can sometimes struggle printing flexible filaments because the filaments can get bunched up in the tube before it gets to the hot end. I was pleasantly surprised to find that not only did the TPU load easily in the printer, but it also printed flawlessly. That is an impressive accomplishment for an entry-level printer such as this one. So what makes this printer stand out from the less expensive Ender 3? There are a lot of changes that were made between the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro, but the main three that make all the difference are these. 1. Upgraded power supply. The Ender 3 Pro uses an upgraded Meanwell brand power supply, which is UL listed, so not only is it safer and more efficient, but the fan is much quieter as well. 2. Upgraded Y-axis rail. The Y-axis rail on the Ender 3 Pro is twice the width and twice the height of the standard Ender 3, providing a much more stable base for the build platform assembly to ride on. This results in more precision and fewer print failures. 3. Magnetic Flexible Build Surface The print surface is textured, so there isn't a need to use hairspray, glue stick, or other adhesion promoters to help the print stick to the surface. The plate is removable and flexible, so you don't need to scrape difficult prints off the surface. Simply remove the build plate, flex, and the print should pop right off. Here's what I like about this printer. After assembly and bed leveling, this printer produces very high quality, precise prints without the need for any upgrades or tinkering. The magnetic, flexible build surface makes it easy to remove finished prints, even when using difficult filaments like PETG, which is notorious for adhering a little too much to print surfaces. The textured surface eliminates the need to use tape, glue stick, or other adhesives when printing filaments that don't like to stick. Here's what I don't like about this printer. The assembly was really the only drawback to owning this printer. Other brands sell printers that are 90% assembled, but that also comes at a higher cost. I wish the written instructions would have pointed me to the video assembly walkthrough on the micro SD card and let me decide whether to use the printed instructions or the video instructions. In conclusion, this is a very nice printer for someone looking to get into 3D printing, or for someone that doesn't need a big build volume but wants something precise and reliable. I really like this printer, and now I understand why the Ender line of 3D printers comes so highly recommended. This printer prints just as good as my other 3D printers that cost a bit more. As long as you are willing to do a little assembly, this printer can be a great value and will handle just about anything you can throw at it. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Ender 3 Pro. I was really impressed with it for as simple of a machine as it is, and I think its simplicity makes it perfect for beginners and hobbyists alike. Once again, if you are interested in buying this, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description box below and it will take you to a Banggood page where you can order. Banggood tends to have the best prices on the internet. As long as you're willing to wait a little bit longer for shipping time, you'll end up saving a lot of money. As always, if you like this content, go ahead and throw me a like, and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Once again, my name is Tom, this is Southpaw Workshop, and I will see you guys next time.